And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, with Mondragon up 2-1 against Phoenix in the PokerStrategy.com Team Liquid Star League round of eight. And here we go. We have Phoenix spawning in the left position as the happy neighborhood Terran. And at the top, we have Mondragon in the Zerg pieces. I'm going to have to work on just slowly tapering back my speaking volume and my talking speed because, you know what, that has been a lot of intense action in both series and especially in that last game. I mean, there was action all over the place. <laughs> and in the Zerg vs. Zerg, uh, not many drones live to the end of those games. So, I mean, just overall phenomenal quality of games today. And I'm equally excited for the games tomorrow. I mean, I'm actually sort of uh, rearranging my plans just so I can catch those ones live because uh got to see the Civil War of Idra vs. Noni coming up. And, of course, the Protoss superstars, JF, who did oh so well in the last Team Liquid Star League. And White Ra, the famous Ukrainian player who... um. It's just a practice machine. I just cannot emphasize how amazing it is to me that he's able to play like 600 and some games every single season of PG Tour. So right now we see Phoenix doing everything nice and calmly, getting the 9 depot. Love that Overlord scouting pattern by Mondragon. He's going to be able to spot that natural very, very easily. See if there's any sort of weird funky jank going on. And overall, just a very, very smooth game by both players. Uh, if we look at Mondragon, Dragon's base, there's this nice little technique which is to select a larva and an overlord and tap the stop button, and then the larva scoot all the way over to the left side of the hatchery. Uh, it's, it's a technique that wasn't discovered very long ago, but it can help to give you a little bit of an extra edge. And that's something that really demonstrates that a, a player is, you know, um, familiar with the, the, the more modern techniques that a player really is trying to get as much edge as they can, maximizing every little thing. That is a great uh, a sign if they're using that larva trick. And we do see, oh, calling it, plus one for day nine, competing against myself for esports dollars. It looks like that the uh, barracks are, in fact, being made in pairs right now, not going for any sort of early expansion. And I like this choice. I mean, if we just uh, glance away from this drone, you know, puking all over the SCVs, if you look at Mondragon's front, that's a pretty wide choke, and early aggression can put sunken colonies in really ugly places. If you want to build two sunken colonies very early on, you're going to have to build them far too close to the hatchery. Ideally, you'd want the sunken colonies a few hexes down south from the hatch. That would be the ideal positioning. So I like this sort of option by uh, Phoenix. Not getting the gas too early, not committing to any sort of medic marine attack. He still has the option to expand. Um, but that early aggression is going to be a good opportunity to just freak Mondragon out a little bit. Not too much, you know, because Mondragon is an experienced player. He's been around for an incredibly long time. Um, and look at Mondragon. I'm hoping he's going to build his hatch underneath. Oh, no, not opting for that. A nice little technique that Zerg players can do is that, look at this geyser. Notice that it's to the left of Mondragon's main hatchery. If you build the, um, the hatchery directly underneath, the drones will mine up and down instead of left and right towards your main hatch, which means they'll be mining a little bit faster. Geysers above and um, uh, geysers that are uh, generally going up and down are a little, little, little bit faster, just marginally ever so faster. I actually prefer that a little bit, but, you know, no big deal, Mondragon going for the, the uh, hatchery right above his ramp. And see, look at this sunken colony. Look at this placement that's at Mondragon's front. Far too close, you know. We ideally want that... Ooh, SCV getting in. <laughs> I mean, we ideally want that sunken colony down a few hexes, and right now Mondragon does not like this at all. Phoenix is getting to see everything that is going on in here. That expansion is going down right now for Phoenix. Look at this nice, cute supply depot placement. Two barracks are up right now, so Phoenix can get a pretty large Medic Marine army up. He's not going to have quite the economy in the mid-game because he got his expansion up a little bit later than he normally would, but that's okay because that Medic Marine group can do a ton of damage early if you're um, playing well. And that's something that I think is an area where Phoenix really shines, is his ability to maximize the use of his Marines in the early game. I mean, we've seen... We see him, even in that game that he just lost against Mondragon, he was doing a lot of very nice work with them. And um, I, I, I really enjoy seeing that out of, out of really any player in any matchup. Just lots of attacking and stuff blowing up. Because again, I got the best seat in the house. I'm the observer. I get to blab away on the day before Valentine's Day. We're watching two Titans clash right here in the round of eight.
And once again, remember that the winner of this match gets $1,000. And right now, Mondragon is up 2-1. He's been in this situation before in his World Cyber Games and Euro Cyber Games appearances where there is a lot of money on the line and he needs to perform incredibly well. Phoenix, I know he won the Pan American Championship in 2009, but I'm curious if he's had a lot other experience um, in major tournaments. Because this is always a, a big consideration how different your game feels when you're in these serious best of fives against one of the most, you know, well-known Zerg players of all time, whether or not you're going to be able to execute it really well is, is, is a tough call. So we do see the stim going down, uh, the usual sort of Medic Marine move out, SCV at the front of Mondragon Space spotting. That is a very early second sunken column. Notice the way this timing lines up. Normally, when a, when a Terran player is moving out with about this size, the Zerg player is getting pretty close to getting his Spire done. It might be like a halfway done Spire or something like that. But at this stage in the game, Phoenix was able to move out so much earlier because he got those early two barracks. Again, his economy is a little bit behind. If we look at that expansion, there's not too many SCVs mining there yet. But um, I, I love these sorts of aggressive openings. Look, using that high ground pod just to be able to run right up there. And of course, Phoenix is going to have to be super careful about counterattacks coming from the south side. A very dangerous spot to be in. And look at Mondragon having to build four sunken colonies total. And if you look around the map, yeah, there are Zerglings up on that high ground pod potentially getting ready to deal with some sort of a big bust in, you know, running in from behind, picking off some Marines. But a, a significant consideration is the fact that Mondragon has not... Oh my god, never mind, he did sneak a drone out. If I'm in Phoenix's position, I'm thinking, awesome, I got him contained, no drones are getting out of here. But Mondragon, way earlier, looks like, moved a drone all the way out to the bottom right main. That is an unbelievably good move. And it looks like Mondragon's going to try to poke in here a little bit, see if there's a window to attack at the natural, but he's going to go ahead and back off. Phoenix still on three barracks, delaying those um, turrets as long as possible. Wants to be able to save money up. And while Phoenix is contained, every good player knows, even though I'm feeling like my opponent didn't get a drone out, Phoenix is doing a very proactive job scouting around the right side of the map. And it looks like these Zerglings are trying to get a little bit aggressive. And that fire bat, whoa, easy there, little fire bat. Let's run on home. He's just going to go ahead and pull back and make sure nothing bad happens. And uh oh, here comes the SCV of Phoenix, checking everything out. And look at this amazing timing by Phoenix. These mutilists by Mondragon are almost done. And look, Phoenix pulling back just in time to get back to his base. This is a, a really obnoxious harassment job to have this drone delayed as long as possible. Uh, Zerglings are coming back. I think that's one of the, the biggest uses of your early Zergling group uh, when you're going three hatching is just to make sure that that drone at the right is covered. I wonder if Phoenix is going to try to move out early or not. It looks like he's pulling back all the way geared up for defense at this point in time. Great positioning. Look at these academy and supply depots in the top left side. And oh, look in the center of the map. It looks like this medic marine group is going to get eliminated. Or not. Wow, I thought Mondragon would move in a little bit more aggressively. Taking out just one Marine. We'd like to see that spread a little bit better. It looks like we... Oh, we have a Medic and a Firebat falling. Oh, missed a swipe. And another swipe he missed. Losing some Mutalisks. And oh, it looks like Mondragon was complaining a little bit about the lag. That is a significant factor whenever you're controlling your Mutalisks. If there's lag everywhere. And oh, God, that control is not what Mondragon wants. I mean, he's going to kill off this group. He's eventually just like, screw it, just go, guys. He's going to run in there. But, I mean, this is not that many Mutalisks. I mean, it looks like maybe 6, 7 right there. That should be 9, 10, 11 at this stage. These turrets that are at the uh, the main and the expansion might not even be needed. And Phoenix screwing up a little bit. If you look at the barracks, look, four units queued at each barracks. I mean, that that's a, a pretty egregious error. All that money could be spent on getting another barracks. You could um, try to push out earlier. You could make more turrets if you are so inclined. But, you know, all those things getting queued up, big danger, very easy to have happen when you're playing as quickly as Phoenix plays to just go back and spam MMMCC, you know, to make everything. But just be careful about that queuing. You might realize that you don't quite need as much APM as you'd originally thought. Usual tech coming forward for uh, Phoenix. Looks like he does, in fact, have that plus one attack upgrade. But that engineering bay needs to get that second upgrade going down right away. I mean, having that plus one armor upgrade against lurkers is huge. 
I mean, most Terran players are comfortable enough microing that they can spread out, but still, the Lurkers are going to be able to get shots off if the Zerg player is good enough. So it's very important to have that armor upgrade early on, because so few Zerg players are going to be getting spines nowadays. It's all about the armor to make sure that those Zerglings can survive a tank shot in one hit and stay alive as long as possible against Medic Marine Fire. And uh-oh, Phoenix moving over to the right. Oh, look at the timing on those lurkers. Just barely getting done in time. And Phoenix is going to move forward aggressively anyways. Look at this double-pronged attack by Phoenix. He's going to target fire these lurkers, see if he can kill them off right as they pop. But also, moving a medic marine group forward to get to the front of Mundragon's base. That way he can um, prevent any sort of reinforcement. Mundragon trying to do some micro with his mutilists, but he's losing so many. And he lost so many mutilists in the center. All his mutilists are gone. It looks like Mundragon's going to lose this expansion. The lurkers are up. One's down. The second lurker is also going to fall. Fall, and Mondragon is going to lose this bottom right expansion. He's trying to morph some lurkers there, but it's time to cancel it and cut the losses. Oh, lurker bug! If any of you are unfamiliar with it, if you kill a lurker right as it's firing, it does maximum damage and kills everything in one shot. That's where we saw that full row of medic marine just collapse immediately. And these medics are dead out of energy. Most of these marines are kind of uh, feeling a little unhealthy at about half health, ten health, something like that. But regardless, this expansion is going to fall. And if we look back in Phoenix's main, six barracks pumping things out. He has the two engineering bays not yet researching, need those researching. But overall, this look is perfect. This big push is going to be coming forward for Phoenix, and Phoenix might just secure game two. This little contained of units outside the front of Mondragon's base is falling right now. Not much that Phoenix can do about that. And the expansion at the right is gone. There isn't even any larva there, but a lone drone awaits in the bottom right corner. This is like an RPG where you get to choose what the history of your character was. And this drone's history, he got to see all his friends ravaged at the Fresh Third Expo of Mondragon. But he's going to come back and stop the Reapers. Look, don't spoil anything for me. I haven't played Mass Effect 2 yet. I so want to get it. But alas, I have to wait until spring break. And until then, talking about Valentine's Day and watching StarCraft. Third Expo going down for Mondragon. He is taking that top left expansion. But if you'll note, those mineral fields have a 1,000 minerals at them. The gas has 2,000, as opposed to the usual 1,500, um, 5,000. Um, looks like this push is coming way earlier than Mondragon expected. His consume is half done. This push is perfect by Phoenix. This is the exact timing of the push. He has centered control of the map. He has, he has an SCV ready to expand to the bottom end. Oh, the science vessel falls! That's going to put a damper on the progress of the push. And only one tank out. There should be two or three tanks right now. Macro slipping a little bit for Phoenix. There he goes, coming back to the main base. Now he's upgrading the plus two, plus one, denying that expansion at the top left. Mondragon is stuck at just those two bases. He's making some Sutton colonies in his main, making sure that he doesn't lose any sort of drops, but a fourth hatch is critical at this stage in the game. These Zerglings are really going to be the aggressive unit. They're going to allow the Lurkers and the Defilers to push forward rapidly and, you know, pick little groups of Medic Marine off, do a little bit of extra damage. And Zerglings are not something to be discounted in this matchup. Beautiful swarm. That tank is going to fall. Phoenix not paying attention too much. Pull those Marines back. Ooh, barely getting out in time. And look at Phoenix with this nice Medic Marine group at the right side of the map, denying any future expansions. Another Marine killing off that drone up there. But here's Mondragon coming forward in the center of the map. Another swarm going down, but Phoenix is just going to slowly pull back. And he's going to try to control everything and funnel them up um, along this high ground pod. Uh-oh, getting caught a little bit. Not comfortable moving up towards this high ground pod. That's a dangerous place to try to run back to, because with those chrysalis eggs still there, your units get clumped up, and the defiler and the lurkers can kill them off very easily. So it looks like Phoenix is going to try to bait Mondragon into try to moving up to this high ground area. See, Mondragon knows that that's going to be his key for aggression, but the Marines are there. Oh, look at that swarm. Those Marines got to get out of there. Oh, that was pretty close. And look at this other group by uh, Phoenix at the bottom of the map, denying Mondragon's south expansion. Fantastic. And the little sad drone at the right who has the tragic history, probably giving him plus to charisma or something like that. He's hanging out there at the bottom right corner, waiting to expand whenever Mondragon has enough money. And the money getting real high for Mondragon. He's at 1,200, 800. Really need to step up that macro, get those upgrades coming out at the Evo Chambers. Neither Evo Chambers researching. Phoenix working his medic marine groups around, continuing to contain the front of Mondragon. Very very difficult for any sort of attack or any sort of progress um, of, for Mondragon in terms of reinforcing this push. We do see the, the, the extra hatchery going down for Mondragon, adding on more stuff, and here comes the push down the pot. Oh, mines! Oh, mine god. Just one lurker there at 24 health. Even if a science vessel glances at that lurker, he's going to die. 
that poor thing. He's going to try to do a little damage, but I love the fact that Phoenix is running this Medic Marine group to the right, darting through the swarm. Very, very difficult technique to master, but incredibly effective. And look at this push at the front. Uh-oh! Oh my god! Phoenix isn't paying attention! Gets a... Oh, that plague by Mondragon. And look how smart Mondragon is, consuming the Zergling that he accidentally plagued himself. Mondragon doing a pretty good job of hanging in there, but a dropship coming into the top side. Not so sure if it's going to really be able to do very much damage. Mondragon is pretty well holed up, not getting any upgrades out of his evolution chambers, just not feeling like it's the right time. Mondragon letting his money get high at 1k, 1k. Here comes the dropship darting into the main, just Marines. No medics anywhere in sight. I'm looking for some Scourge as well. No Scourge. The sad drone in the bottom right expanding to reclaim stuff for his people. And look at that drop just get demolished. Very dangerous to drop a player who's just stuck on his main and his natural. Who prefer to just gloop all over the, the bottom side of the map. Get additional science vessels. Maybe back tech to those tanks. Got to keep those upgrades moving out. 2-1 for Phoenix needs to get that 3-2 very quickly. That is probably the most fundamental component of this control, and that plague again! How is it possible? I think that Mondragon's plagues just do like twice the radius, you know? Again, just, you know, it's kind of like an RPG. If you're a German Zerg, your plagues are bigger, you know? If you are a Peruvian Terran, then your tanks on siege faster. You know, cho choose your team. Coming forward, look at these, look at these Zerglings just demolishing these plague units. Love that technique. And look at Phoenix not getting confused. Our poor little drone, who so valiantly is trying to rebuild for his people, pops up saying, I'm ready, world. Build stuff out of me. Oh, Marines. Oh, Jesus. And now he's going to fall pretty easily. Phoenix doing an excellent job of controlling his high ground pod, trying to make sure nothing ends up advancing too far forward. One Dragon's still pretty high on money. Now he's getting uh, uh, an upgrade out of one of his evolution chambers. Look at these brave vessels advancing forward, trying to take out this Defiler, but it's not going to happen. Not able to take it out. Phoenix expanding all over the map. He's getting the bottom side, and here's a swarm up on the high ground pod. Another plague, but not so good this time. Phoenix is going to try to block off those lurkers for as long as possible. Taking some losses, but well worth it. Look at Phoenix working around. <gasps> oh, that one lurker. Look, 14 kills. Oh, that's just brutal. Oh, runs out of scan. That lurker lived with 8 hit points. <laughs> Whoopsie daisies. Mondragon also taking the north expansion. Again, even though it's low on minerals, it's very, very easy to defend. Mondragon doing a pretty good job of macroing now. Not nearly as well as the previous game where he was clearly in control, but making sure that he does everything he can to keep advancing forward very aggressively. 250 hit points. Another swarm. Here comes the mine going off, taking out everything underneath that swarm. The lurkers, the defiler, even a medic and a marine to boot. Those mines are seriously keeping Phoenix in this game. And look at Phoenix's money. 150. That is so low, keeping his money as close to zero as possible. Another pretty nice plague. Mondragon very proactive about using those plagues. With such a low unit count, he can plague away and use his Zerglings to annihilate all the one health units. And just for comparison, Mondragon is at 63 food, and Phoenix is at 182, almost tripling his food, but Mondragon doing an excellent job of hanging in there as long as possible. Some Marines for Mondragon, trying to poke around the right side of the map, just desperately wanting to get some more expansions up. Dark Swarm can only do so much, getting more upgrades in the main. Uh, it looks like, yep, yeah, 3-2 upgrades coming now for Phoenix, but this is the point where Phoenix is starting to get increasingly high on his vessel count. He can really keep those attacks down, and oh, the drop at the north end! That expansion is gonna fall for Mondragon, unless these Zerglings can manage to take everything out, but those upgrades are pretty good on Phoenix, and no! Absolutely nothing that's going to be done to that top expansion. These drops, although drops are very good in this matchup in general, when your opponent is at that small of a distance to defend everything, drops become much weaker. When your opponent just has a main and a natural, drops aren't going to be that effective. When his third base is touching the exit to his natural, not going to be as effective. If he's spread all over the map, drop away, my friends. But be very careful at this stage in the game. We like pushing and science vessels quite a bit more. And very clear dominance right now by Phoenix, just taking the entire map, adding on more factories, getting that more additional muscle. Some pushing, trying to come back for Mondragon, but look at this. Six tanks right here. Let's see if he can manage to push forward. Uh-oh, another plague coming in. Swarm. Let's see if he gets the plague. No, the Defiler manages to get taken out. Zergling's coming forward, trying to unseize the tanks. Looks like he will take out a handful of tanks, but Mondragon taking heavy, heavy losses. 56 food to still 185 food for Phoenix. 
Phoenix letting his money get a little bit high. Not much that can be done about that, considering the fact that, you know, he's maxed. But still, good thing to consider. Can I get armies? Can I get more upgrades? Can I expand? Can I build more factories? So that way when my food frees up, I can just flood with tanks. Beautiful swarms getting right into those tanks. But unfortunately, Phoenix, given his character class, he can unsiege twice as fast. And manages to save two tanks just in time. One Dragon reinforcing with a handful of Hydros. It looks like he may have gotten the speed upgrade for Hydros. I like that. When you're low on economy, those Hydras with the range and the speed can be very effective, especially when combined with Plague. Wonderful reference game, Hwasen vs. Luxury on Destination. Beautiful example of Hydralis in action. And a drop going down at the north end. Not efficient to do drop, but you're still splitting Zerg's attention. Look at Mondragon ripping this drop apart. But meanwhile, at the front, Phoenix is moving forward with those science vessels. See what that drop did? Opened up that opportunity to get right in there and do serious damage. Look at this. I mean, losing the vessels, not a big deal at all. Look, more vessels coming. It's like he's surrounding them with vessels. Look at this. <laughs> uh oh, it's a vessel flank from both ends. Yeah, that's when you know you're in not so good of a position as Zerg. Oh man, Mondragon, look, holding on, fighting as best he can, but just no space to maneuver. Look at this beautiful job of controlling by Phoenix, pulling back. At that entrance to the high ground pod, he managed to kill off all the chrysalises, or the chrysali, or the chrysalixin, or whatever the plural is, taking them all out, so that way he can get a maximum maneuverability, reinforce that army constantly. Look, more drops. Look at that dropship. He's just wandering up and down, just sending anything he can to the top. And, you know, it's not if it's not efficient. Notice that word I'm using. It's not efficient. He is losing money on average with those drops, but it's just so important to keep the Zerg distracted when you have this outrageous lead that Phoenix has right now. You just can't let him get space and movement forward. Look at that Dark Swarm by Mondragon moving forward. Everything plagued. Can he take out all those units? Yes, indeed. Lays it right onto him. But oh my god, look outside Phoenix, Phoenix's front. Units just flooding out. There are control groups of Medic Marine all around the map. And if we look at the bottom, more barracks, command centers, factories, the armories are being added on now. My god, he could just go back right now. I mean, Phoenix is in a good spot to, like, fight a Terran versus Protoss if Protoss prop into the game. And look at that! Another unbelievable plagues! If there is one way Mondragon's gonna win this game, it's by plaguing everything consistently that well. I am blown away at the ability of Mondragon to consistently get those, those hero swarms off. With those, uh, with those plagues. We have a bunch of one life science vessels here. Oh, I want those hydrals to take them out so badly, but Mondragon is so low on units, still at just 70 food against um, Phoenix, who's at 4k minerals and max. Here comes the push up. Nice swarm, nice plague. Small medic marine group, but still getting every single one that's there. There's all these medic marine groups positioned all around the map. I mean, Mondragon trying to reinforce. Looks like Mondragon now sending some scourves to the top left, making sure no drops get in there. Mondragon fighting as best he can, but the issue right now is how is Mondragon going to get a fourth base? He's running really low on minerals. Nice surround by Phoenix in the middle. Ooh, Swarm getting in there just in time in the center of the map. And if we look down here at the bottom, Phoenix has also taken the bottom natural expansion. He's just pouring tanks out of that bottom base, getting the upgrade from the armory. He now has the, look, look in the center of the map, look at that eBay, look at that science vessel spotting everything. Perfect late game play by Phoenix. Some swarms coming up, gonna try to do a little bit of magic here with his uh, Lurker Defiler, but it's really not gonna cut it. His minerals are too low, um, there's virtually no way to deal with it. And, oh look, a drop still manages to get off at the top left where those Scourgies were there. And if we go to the front of Phoenix's base, sure there are some Lurkers there, but those those Science Vessels are going to make short work of that. Oh, the top expansion falls for Mondragon. Oh god, that is an ugly spot to be in. And think about this. The way that Phoenix was able to get into this situation from the get-go was because he did that two barracks opening and was so aggressive with that early medic marine group and managed to take out that right expo. And from there, Phoenix just held on. And what we're really seeing right now is the power of strong Zerg late game. This is exactly how the Zerg wants to play, but he just can't quite put in any sort of finishing blow or any dent, really, in Terrence front without that critical early third gas. And now it looks like Zerg is only on two gas. The expansion is depleted. The main is depleted. There's an Ultralisk Cavern done, but there is just no resources to support that. And pure Ling Defiler is just not going to be able to hold on this relentless onslaught from Phoenix. Phoenix did nothing but control the middle. No big pushes at the end of the game. All he needed to do was just keep his opponent 
to just those three bases. And look at the... Oh, good game. Currently, we have the series tied up 2-2, two to two, and we are going into the final game. That was an just it, it, outrageous, outrageously good job by Phoenix. I mean, Phoenix is down 1-2. Uh, in the first game, he did this bit. He attempted this big bust in, but it didn't work and lost a little bit embarrassingly. Second game, he managed to do this beautiful counter push, and then in the third game, he got dominated very hard. And Phoenix just gave such an answer in game four. Just a beautiful, beautiful job of having solid, solid play. Nothing cute, nothing cheesy. Letting Mondragon know that even when Mondragon is doing the most standard thing in the world, and Mondragon is getting all those timings up exactly the way he wants. Wants, Phoenix can still win. Phoenix can still push with that beautiful Medic Marine timing if he's not careful and end the game very early on. So we're transitioning right into game five. We're going directly into Andromeda. I personally love this map because if any of you didn't know this, I kind of have a Zergling fetish against Terran. I love the fact that on Andromeda you get that extra mineral natural. You can get a Badrillion Gorillion Zergling. Seriously, like 20 Brazilian Zerglings. They are so useful in that mid game. In fact, a lot of players actually opt to open Lurker on this map because they can get such a huge influx of Lurker Ling in the mid game and just control the, the, the Terran center army that way. They don't need these Mutalisks to micro to keep the Terran down to delay the mid game push. Bring on the mid game push Terran. Even if you have the best execution ever, I just have Zerglings. Ha <laughs> ha! But Terran also has the opportunity of taking that mineral natural very early as well. We see a lot of Terrans who as they're doing their first big mid game push they just plop down that third expansion right away and they add on a ton of barracks so that they too can get a gajillion marines to counter the Ferillion uh, Zerglings that are also out there. Like seriously, like 20 pavilion marines. So um, I think it's going to be a, a, a beautiful example of who can macro the best. I think this is the best final map we could have possibly chosen. This has to go to the late game. There is almost no way, given how strong these players are, that it won't go and I, uh, won't go past the, um, or won't go before Look, it's going to be a long game, all right? Let's just get right into it. Game 5 on Andromeda.